Welcome to another video from Ford Tech. Today's video is going to be on how to use a basic etching kit found at uh, any local electronics store. The kit I'm using today is one purchased from a local Radio Shack. Alright, so <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to talk about today is just the basic tools you're going to need to do the job. Everything to do this should be included in the kit that you buy. Um, the first thing that they give you is going to be an SOS pad. Uh, this is going to be used to clean off the surface of the second object they give you, which is going to be a copper plate on one side and silicone on the other side. Now if this looks a little bit familiar, it's because this would be the metal that's going to actually create the circuit board itself. So this is actually a circuit board without any lines drawn in it yet. You can just see this is one solid thin sheet of copper right there. So the next thing they give you in the kit is going to be just a standard Sharpie fine point marker. This is going to be actually used to uh, create the circuit rails that you would like to have on the board. We'll get into that later. The next thing they're going to include is going to be your PCB etching solution. And then, of course, your resistant ink solvent, which will, you know, allow you to remove the ink that you've drawn on the board to reveal your nice rails that you've created. And lastly, a nice little drill bit, which will allow you to drill the holes so that you can solder your components onto the actual board. Now I'm going to start off by saying that this is very dangerous. This, the chemicals that are used in this kit can harm you. They do include a warning on the box. I'm not sure if you can read that very well, but it says danger, harmful if swallowed, causes severe burns, contents flammable, keep out of reach of children, read carefully specific dangers on individual bottles. So they basically tell you that this stuff is very dangerous. So the next thing that I'm going to recommend that you use for this kit is going to be a pair of rubber gloves and a Pyrex dish to hold the etching solution. Alright, gone ahead and reset my camera here. As I said before, I'd show you just a basic pair of nitrile gloves. Um, these are going to not prevent you from being burned, but give you enough time in case some etching solution splashes on your hand to be able to remove the glove and wash your hands. I've got it on me before and not wearing gloves it will burn you. So that's that. And then of course we have our nice Pyrex dish. Um, this is going to be used to actually hold the containing etching solution and the board. You'll place the board down in there like that and pour the etching solution on top. So we're going to start off here and begin um, with the process of actually etching the design on the board. Alright, so the first step you're going to want to do to make sure that you don't accidentally make some mistakes while you're drawing on your circuit board is you're going to design your <clears throat> actual etch on a piece of paper. Basic piece of paper, and if you want, you can use the pen that they give you. I have a few of them, so I'm just going to go ahead and use this for clarity. So, you kind of want to come up with a good idea, a plan for what you want your circuit board to do. So, I'm just going to do something really simple. We're going to make a a uh, simple little circuit with a smiley face and uh, some LEDs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a positive terminal. So right there. So that's going to tell me that I have a positive terminal and a negative terminal. And what this will allow me to do is connect the positive and negative leads of the battery. So that's the most important thing. You have to have a, a power source to run your circuit. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, you know, I want to have an LED here. So I'm going to make a dot for each of the terminals because if you examine an LED, it's a basic LED I got here, they have two prongs coming out, one positive and one negative. So that would fit right in that little hole just like that. You have your basic little LED. So we're going to use that. So we have our two eyes there. And then we're going to go ahead and give it four little dots for the mouth. So we're going to go one here for positive and negative, one here for positive and negative, one here for positive and negative, and one here and 
here for positive and negative. Now here's where kind of the trick comes into play. So you see how you have all these dots and some of these dots are going to be for the positive side and some are going to be for the negative side. So what you want to do is you want to figure out the most efficient way to draw your circuit line so that you can distribute the power to each of the appropriate rails without having to draw a line from, you know, individual. So now I've got the actual rough draft of the design done. As you can see here, I've gone ahead and drawn my negative rails to each of the negative terminals and then my positive rail to each of the positive terminals. Um, I went ahead and made the dots just a little bit bigger so that you can see them in the video. Um, it's not necessary that you actually make your contacts that large, but I like to make them a little bit larger that way when I'm actually drilling these little guys out with my drill bit, I will have plenty of room to, you know, not accidentally go off to the side one way or the other. Alright, so you're going to want to take your copper before you start transferring your image and just give it a light scrubbing just to make sure that there's no debris or buildup or tarnish on top of the copper sheet so that your etching solution will penetrate and remove all the copper that you desire. It's pretty simple. SOS pad. Do a little scratchy. And when you're done, you should get a nice shiny copper penny look to it. Brand new copper penny. So once that's done, then you can go ahead and start actually drawing out your image. And that way you won't have any areas that fail to remove from the etching. As you can see, the original design pattern that I created is slightly different than the one on the circuit board, but this is typical of what happens when you're designing a board. You know, as you're going along, you realize that, you know, by simply changing the style of the way you connect the lines, you can, you know, create a much easier pattern to follow. So instead of having all these zigzag lines that go all around, it's much easier and you'll create a much nicer finished product with clean, straight, smooth lines without, you know, lots of little jaggeds in it. So here is going to be the finished product of all your work here, the past few steps. You're going to notice I, I marked right there, this BATT will actually stay in copper. All the copper that you see right now will be removed and anything underneath this protective ink will stay. Hence, once we etch it, we will have a nice copper rail which will connect the negative and positive of our battery. And I think I'm going to go ahead and name this guy here real quick. I like to name all my creations, so we're going to call him Smile. Or whatever that spells. Pretty sure that spells Smile. So there we go, and our next step is going to be actually etching the board itself. Alright, <clears throat> so we are now ready to actually perform the etching itself. As you can see, i got my protective gloves on, I've got my Pyrex safety dish, and I've got my board with a nice etch pattern on it using our etching resistant ink. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our powerful etching solution. Now this is designed like I've talked to you guys about before. It's going to remove all the visible copper not protected by the ink. So if everything goes well here and all all our steps are performed properly. Once this step is done, we should have a nicely etched board. So I'm going to go ahead and pour in our solution here. 
And uh, when you first open the kit, you'll notice there's a little protective thing. Be very careful when you're actually cutting. I'd recommend using a laser blade to slice through it because it will splash out and it will get you. So that's one tip I'd give to people that have never used one of these kits before. Slice the protective covering here with a razor to protect yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. And be careful not to splash. As you can see, it comes out. It's a little bit runnier than maple syrup but has a decent consistency running a little bit a little bit low on solution normally you'd want to put about a quarter of an inch of solution in the bottom here so move that there don't worry about that that's just the reflection from the light so now like I talked about before you want to take this and you're going to want to put it face down into the actual solution itself some people do it face up but I like to do it face down because then I'm guaranteed that I'm going to be able to get even co uh, coverage of the board and there's not a chance the board will float up and expose the very edge of it so like I said be very careful I like to start like that push it over to the side use the very corner with your fingers and then just slowly drop it down in there now I'm going to take it and flip it. You can see I got a little bit on my fingers, but that's okay. So there you go. Push it down into the solution. And then just for the purpose of this video, I think I will actually do this one with the etching up, just so you guys can kind of see what you're looking for. Normally I do this facing down, but uh, today I think it'll be okay. Um, another reason why I do it face down, as you'll notice I already accidentally did it, um, I touched the railing with my glove and actually removed some of the ink. So that's what you got to be careful of. That's why I like to do it face down. Um, what you want to do is just agitate it a little bit to get the reaction started. And if you notice, see how the board is turning black like that? that's indicating that the solution is actually starting to etch. So this process can take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes depending on the actual um, the actual amount of uh, solution you have, how much copper is actually on the board. But we'll go ahead and come back to this here as soon as the uh, solution is finished. All right, it's been about five minutes now or so. I'm just doing a quick uh, update. So. Um, one thing that is recommended when you're doing this that I did not mention before I stopped the description of the last step was agitating the actual solution ever so lightly just back and forth as you can see kind of creating a small little wave will help uh, it, it not only helps you get a better etch but it also ensures that the solution is removing the copper as efficiently as possible it's not necessary to do this the entire time, but doing this will in, it will increase the speed at which it, it finishes its etching. So you can kind of see the board down in there and just washing back and forth. The solution will continue to turn black as you etch more and more copper off the actual board. That's the copper oxide forming from the etching solution. All right, so it's been about 20, 25 minutes or so, and as you can see, the solution has turned completely black, and if we tip it here, you can start to see, and there's our board right there. Uh, now the next step is going to be, uh, you're going to need to properly dispose of the acid here, so what I like to do is get a acid-safe container, pour it into it, and then... Um, Contact your local waste disposal management place and find out where they um, take hazardous chemicals at. Uh, usually it's a small fee or free to drop off, so that's usually what I do. I collect all my harmful chemicals and then take them to the local waste depository for proper disposal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then to stop the actual reaction so that we don't eat away our existing rails here, because it will eat through the actual marker if you leave it in there long enough, 
we're going to rinse the board once we've dumped out the acid in just regular plain water. Do that for about two, three minutes, and the reaction will start. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here out of the frame, and we'll come back. All right, so I went ahead and rinsed the board and stopped the reaction, and so now we are ready for the revealing step. And see all of our hard work here and see if our circuit rails turned out okay. So we're going to go ahead and take our etching, uh, or excuse me, our ink remover, and this is going to remove our marker that we use to etch out the rail. So I'm just taking, you know, just a regular old, um, it's actually a torn up sock, putting some of the etching solution on it, and it's as easy as just taking it and you just wipe away. Wipe back and forth, and there you go. Nice and shiny. So we're going to go ahead and do that over the whole entire board. Make sure you get all of it really good. And if you don't have any, any of this um, actual resistant ink solvent, or if you do run out, instead of going and buying one of the large bottles, it's actually just high-end rubbing alcohol. So uh, if you don't want to spend the money to buy name brand uh, ink remover, uh, you know, any, any uh, you know, basic uh, uh, iso isopropyl alcohol will work. So, all right, here you go. So now we have our nicely etched board and you can see we have all our little rails all visible there and it looks like all of them turned out really nicely we have pretty solid run the whole way through and no breaks uh, one thing you want to check for is look very carefully to make sure that anywhere along your rail uh, some of the copper did not accidentally get um, worn away so uh, last thing if you want to you can come by and just lightly shine it up um, just to remove any excessive corrosion, just to ensure that when you go to solder your actual components into the board, the solder will stick properly. And then once you've cleaned it all up, all right, so I've gone ahead and drilled the first hole through the circuit board. You can see it right there. And as you're going through, uh, you know, you just want to very easily work the bit through and for sake of time I'm not going to sit here and videotape me drilling all the holes through it but basically the trick to it is um, use a punch or a screwdriver or something to mark on the center of where you want to actually drill your holes so you make a little dot right there and then by doing that you create a point for your drill bit to start and then you just very slowly there you go now you have a nice hole right through your board right through your little contact hole that you made so then once you're done you can put your leads through there Alright, so I've gone ahead and finished drilled all of the holes and put in the LEDs, hooked up a battery, put a resistor, and a switch. So now, if everything worked correctly, there we go, yep, all of our LEDs are working. Alright, well, I'd like to thank everybody for watching my video. Hopefully this helps you out and uh, you'll be able to safely create your own circuit boards at home with any basic etching kit from anywhere. Uh, please like and subscribe and watch any of my videos. Thanks.